All right, this next video is gonna actually be two sections. It's gonna be section 1-5 and 1-6 on comp I'm computing with real numbers, um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and a strange little portion on simplifying. Now, reminder, if you need to reach me, you can find me on SV Math Teach on YouTube, and otherwise, enjoy. This pair of sections we're gonna work on today involves adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing real numbers. Now the truth is, there's nothing really different about these rules than what you learned in whatever your class was before Algebra 1. All the rules are the same with integers, uh, because integers have positives and negatives. These simply involve real numbers, so you might see fractions or decimals. Um, the sections are so similar and so easy compared to some others that we're going to do them together. Um, if you're looking at these problems and you're trying to visualize what they look like, um, one suggestion would be, if you don't already know a rule, imagine if you had five negatives, you would have five negative signs. And you're going to add two, but you notice the two doesn't have a negative sign in front of it, so that means the two is positive. I'm going to add two positives. Well, every positive and negative pair is sometimes referred to as a zero pair, and every zero pair essentially cancels itself out. The remainder is negative three, so you get negative three. And if you read a textbook, they'll tell you all sorts of different techniques that involve number lines and counting left and right. Those are all fine as well. There's even techniques involving absolute value symbols. Those are great also. For me, I tend to visualize everything this way, or at least that's how I learned it when I was a kid. Um, same idea here. You have two negatives. You add one more negative. So in my mind, I have two negatives. I add another negative. There's no zero pairs. Nothing cancels. And I get negative three again. It gets a little tougher when there's a minus sign, so most of your teachers would teach you some phrase like keep change change or add the opposite. Um, any of those things would essentially mean, I'll switch colors, that you have three parts to this problem. You have the original part, the negative three. You have the operation, in this case minus, and you have the next part, in this case negative five. So you would keep the first part the same you would change, I'm going to use a triangle for the word change, you change the symbol from minus to plus, and then you would change this thing to its opposite. So, well, I mean, technically you're changing this to its opposite as well. So it is negative five changes to its opposite of positive five, and essentially all you've done is now turned it into a problem you could solve using this technique. So I don't know that you need that. You're going to get positive two. And if you have decimals, it gets a little tougher once again to do anything with symbolism with decimals. One thing I would ask is once you get to the decimal piece, you can probably visualize that this is gonna come out to be negative. You know it's a subtraction, well, you know it's gonna be negative because you don't have, you have 1.4, but you're taking more than 1.4 away. So you're gonna go into debt on this one. That's why it's negative. Besides that, I'm just gonna stack the 6.4, the bigger of the two numbers on top, the smaller of the two numbers on the bottom. I'll line up my decimals. I'll subtract uh, six minus one is five. I don't need the decimal. So I have this, and that's the way I would subtract it. Um, even though it's out of order like you'd expect, the negative sign accounts for this out of orderness, and then you can just stack it and subtract like you've always done. And that's really all there is to section 1-5. Once again, we're gonna leave that one and go right into 1-6. I already have the notes ready to go. 1-6 is essentially the same thing. It's just rules that you've already le learned in the past. Um, the rules for multiplying and dividing real numbers are the same as the rules for multiplying and dividing integers. You might recall that if the symbols are the same, well, those are my dogs and their collars, uh, positive times a positive is a positive, same thing with division. Uh, negative times a negative or negative divided by a negative is a positive. And if they're different, either with the negative sign first or the negative sign second, if they're different, then you get a negative. Having said that, once again, I'll switch colors. Here comes the exponent again. This exponent is touching the parentheses, so the parentheses is negative three times negative three, and a negative times a negative is a positive, so we get positive nine. Um, with fractions, uh, I see a negative times a positive, so I know my answer is going to be negative. Beyond that, I just multiply fractions like I normally do, top times top, bottom times bottom. So three times one, four times two, and I get negative three eighths. Um, division can be written two different ways. Uh, a normal way to see it would be kind of a really ugly one here. You see a fraction with the division bar and then another fraction. That's not something that most of you enjoy working with. I might rewrite that 
the old fashioned way with a line and the two dots. But then with the line and the two dots, I would immediately go to that multiply by the reciprocal piece. You might recall that that means that you change the division to multiply, and this thing you turn to its reciprocal. You essentially flip it upside down, and you get negative two fifths. Um, I do have an opportunity to simplify here. This two divides two one time, two divides four twice, so I can simplify a little bit. And now I'm gonna multiply straight across. Three times negative one is negative three, two times five is 10, and I have my answer of negative three tenths. Uh, a note, whether the negative sign is in front of the entire fraction or whether the negative sign is on the numerator or if it were on the denominator only, um, these would be the same idea. They're both negative. Um, this does not suggest that both values are negative. It just suggests that the entire value is negative, just like it does here. Now, I'd normally be done, but there is this odd, and I don't really know why they put it in section 1-6, but all textbooks do it differently. There is this odd little section on simplifying. Um, so there are three different examples of simplifying. They involve real numbers, so I thought I'd mention them now. If you're simplifying square roots, now most of the ones that you're going to see, at least in our textbook, are going to be perfect squares at this point, but let's imagine that they're not, or you're not sure. Maybe you don't know what 225 breaks down to. Um, I might break it down to, gosh, let's see, five times, five goes into 225, let's say, oop, well, if I don't know, I guess I have to do it. So you're getting a chance to see me actually do this live. Five into 22, four, that's a 20, 25, all right, now I have it. So it goes in 45 times, so that's actually how you would do this. Um, I'm gonna break 45 down into five and nine, and then I'm gonna break nine down into three and three. Now, if you have all this broken down, what you might observe is anytime you're looking for a square root, you've learned that you're looking for squares or pairs of numbers. I have a five times five here, I have a three times three, and when I square root those, I get a five and a three to come out of there. I'm not going into all the detail, I'm only showing you the answer. Um, this should be something that you've learned in the past. Um, if I have a fraction, um, don't panic on the fraction. Just imagine that the fraction is an individual square root of the numerator and a square root of the denominator. I know the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 36 is 6. Um, I also notice this plus or minus here. That indicates that the positive version and the negative version are desired. So I'll just carry that over into my answer. Um, you can write it this way, or if you really wanted to, you could write something like negative 5 sixth comma positive 5 6 but of course that's extra writing, so some people prefer this. And finally, if you see a negative sign in front of the square root, um, we're looking for a negative answer. Um, I will probably talk about something in class called the principal, uh, PL, I believe it's principal spelled this way, principal square root. Um, the principal square root essentially is the positive square root. Um, Math people will tell you that square roots have two values, the positive and the negative. In almost all cases, the principal square root is the positive, and it's kind of the accepted version. Um, so, for example, this one right here, the 15 is considered the principal square root because it's the positive answer. Now, without getting into further detail, again, all that really means is if I see a plus minus, I expect to see a plus minus. If I see a negative, I expect to see a negative. And if you're worried about breaking down 1.21, you might recall that 121, um, the square root of that is 11 squared. So in this case, I'm gonna try 1.1, and I'm gonna guess to see what happens. Now I know one, you know, 11 times 11 is 121, and I know one decimal times one decimal would produce two decimals, so I feel pretty confident that that is going to be my answer. And that is it. Uh, so chapters 1-5 and 1-6, all about computing and just a little bit of simplifying with real numbers.